Okay, we're gonna go super quick today because I got things to do. So um, we're doing complex numbers and roots today. Take out some notes and some paper and make sure that you follow along. Let's go. Math with Miss B. Math with Miss B. There's a thousand other places that you'd rather be. But you're watching Math with Miss B. Okay, so when we have when we talk about complex roots, right? What we're talking about is the roots of the function are where the graph intersects the x-axis. So if we're looking at this parabola right here, right? Notice that this parabola does not touch the x-axis, so that means that it would not have any roots, right? Well, if the graph does not touch the x-axis, it has no real solutions. It has what we call imaginary and complex solutions, okay? So the graph has no solutions, but this graph has complex roots, and we'll talk about how we get into complex roots and con complex solutions um, in this video. Okay, <laughs> sorry. So complex roots, so what do complex roots look like in an equation? So let's say I have the function f of x equals x squared plus one. I gotta replace um, f of x with zero because you know when we're solving quadratics, you wanna set that thing equal to zero. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna isolate x by subtracting one from both sides. So I'm gonna get negative one equals x squared. Well, how do I get rid of that exponent? Good, you take the square root of both sides. You're a smarter particle. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say plus or minus negative one equals x. Because remember when you take the square root, you always wanna put a plus or minus in front of it. So this square root of negative one is i. So when you hear people talk about imaginary numbers, this is what we are talking about. We represent the square root of negative one with a letter called i, and we call those solutions, those numbers imaginary numbers. It's because they're not really touching the x-axis, right? So keeping that in mind, that the square root of negative one equals i, it's really important that you know the powers of i. Okay, so the first one that we're going to do is i equals the square root of one, this square root of negative one. The square root of negative one equals i. Those are interchangeable. Bring them back and forth. Okay, but what, what if I have i squared? Well, i squared equals negative one. i to the third equals i cubed equals negative i. i to the fourth equals one. So let's say I have i to the fifth power. What is that going to be? Well, it's going to be the square root of negative one. What if I have i to the sixth power? That's going to be negative 1. What if I have i to the seventh power? Do you guys notice the pattern that's happening? What is that going to be? That's going to be negative i. And then last but not least, i to the eighth power, what's that going to be? You can guess it, right? Because you're looking at the pattern, it's going to be 1. But how do I get these powers and like where do they come from and how did they happen? And Miss B, you're just telling us stuff, but you're not really explaining how it came about. Well, I got you, because you know I like to explain the things, okay? So let's say I have i squared, right? i squared is the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. But remember, the square root of negative 1 is i. So i squared is i times i. And i times i equals negative 1. So i squared equals negative 1. Boom. Right? So that's basically the gist. If the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1, those square roots cancel each other out, and I'm just left with a negative one under the radical. Okay, that i squared is the basis of everything else. So let's take i cubed. So i cubed is I have the square root of negative one times the square root of negative one times the square root of negative one. So three times, so that means I have three i's. i times i times i. Well, we already know that i times i is negative one, right? So that's why I made those purple to match the previous box. So negative one times i is guess what? Negative i. So that's how I get i cubed. So now we're going to go on to the fourth one, right? So we're going to do i to the fourth power. So I have the square root of negative one four times repeated, right? But we already know that that's really four i's repeated, right? So I know that two i's, i times i, gives me, look at that first box, right? i times i gives me what? Negative one. And another i times i on the other side gives me what? Another negative one. That's why I made the first two purple. There's an orange dot in the middle and then the last two purple because two purples make a negative one, two purples make a negative one. So negative one times negative one gives me what? Positive one. You see me? You see me? 
Okay, so, <laughs> so what we're gonna be, go ahead and do now is I'm gonna show you how they all repeat now, right? So we know that I to the first power, second power, third power, fourth power, when I get to the fifth power, it starts to repeat, six, seven, eight, repeat, nine, 10, 11, 12, repeat. So I to the fifth power is five I's, right? We know that four I's equals positive one because that was the previous box. Four I's equal positive one. That's why I made them orange. So I'm gonna have one times I. Well, one times I is what? I. That's I to the first power, same answer. So I have six, so I have six I's now. So remember four I's equals what? A one. And two I's equals a negative one. One times negative one equals I to the six is negative, negative one. So we see how the pattern's repeating. So how do I get I to the seven? Well, I to the seven means I have four i's we all know that four i's is going to give me a one i times i i squared is going to give me negative one and then i have an i left over what's one times negative one negative one negative one times i is negative i come on somebody and then that last one is going to be eight i so that means i have four i's i made them a darker orange but they're still orange right because four orange i's and then four orange i's is really going to be one times one and one times one is still what one this pattern is going to repeat forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and that's basically the powers of i in a nutshell so we're going to look at this beautiful table of the powers of i when i have a power to the fifth power to the sixth power to the seventh power to the ninth power tenth power eleventh power twelfth power thirteenth power fourteenth power see how they keep repeating 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 i negative i ne sorry i negative one negative i one i negative one negative i one okay my students made up this thing called i won i won because that's the order it goes in it goes a i and then a one and then an i and then a one and the two ones in the middle get a negative that's how they decided to make it up so shout out to seventh period last year with uh with my my 2000 my 2019 2020 class that got ruined by covid shout out to y'all i won i won two negatives in the middle that's the remember that okay so and just for the purposes of showing you that even the more higher the power they still keep repeating the same pattern. I won, I won, negatives in the middle. Multiples of four always line up with I to the four. So look, 20, 24, 28, those are all numbers that are multiples of four and they add up, they line up with I to the fourth power. So we're gonna need that little fun fact in the next slide. So let's say I have I to the 54, right? You not, could you count? powers of i could you be like one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve until you get to 54 you sure could or what you could do is one you could divide the power by four so 54 divided by four and find the remainder 54 divided by four is 13 with two, a remainder of two so what you're going to do is you're going to match that remainder with the power of i so if the remainder is two you're going to go to i squared or i to the second power and so guess what? The answer to that is I squared, which is negative one. So then we'll go to the next one. The next one is a little funky because what do I have? I have six I to the 14th, which equals what? So we're gonna take 14 first, we're gonna divide that by four. So 14 divided by four is three with a remainder of two. Re uh, so I would look at I squared and I would say, what is the answer? And I would say, 6i squared but we know that i squared is really what negative 1 okay 63 divided by 4 is 15 with remainder 3 so that's going to be what i cubed so that's going to be negative i and then i'm going to do 64 64 divided by 4 is 16 remainder 0 anytime you have a remainder 0 that's the fourth number on the thing remainder 0 is i to the fourth the re if the remainder is zero that is i to the fourth so and we know that i to the fourth is what one so we're going to do 101 okay so and there's a negative in the front of it so first we're going to do 101 divided by four that's going to give me 25 remainder one so that's just i right so negative i negative times i excuse me is negative i 
and we do that like that. Okay, try that last one by yourself. Pause the video. Okay, so we would do 41 divided by 4. That's 10. Remainder 1. So my answer is just going to be I. Yeah. Yeah. You got that. Okay, so now let's talk about if we have to simplify radicals, right? Because we're going to, this is like a mini subset skill that we have to take into solving equations and simplifying answers, right? So let's say I have the square root of negative 2. And that precious little square root right there is really the same thing as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 2. But what we just had learned is that the square root of negative 1 is what? I. So the answer, the, the, way to, the proper way to express this answer is I square root of 2. So let's try the square root of 4. We know the square root of 4 is the same thing as 4 times the square root of negative 1, right? The square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of negative 1 is i. So 2i is my answer here. Look at the difference between those two problems. You don't want to get tripped up. OK, so let's talk about 18, right? First of all, if there's a negative under there, automatically take that i out. And now let's simplify 18. 2 times 9. Um, 9 is going to break apart into 3 times 3. Doubles come outside, singles stay inside. So 3i square root of 2 is my final answer for that. Let's try the 12. Automatically, because there's a negative under that radical, what am I taking out? An i, right? And I'm going to simplify 2 times 6. 2 times 2 times 3. Doubles go outside, singles stay inside. 2i square root of 3 is the proper way for me to simplify that. You got it? A couple more. OK, so we have the square root of negative 25, and then we have the square root of negative 7. So i square root of 25, because anytime there's a negative, we take out the i immediately. The square root of 25 is 5, so 5i. Five Square root of negative 7, I'm going to go ahead and take that i out. And can I do anything with the 7? Nah. So that's my answer. I leave it alone. Leave it alone. All right, let's talk about if there's numbers on the outside. Oh, my goodness. Um, so first of all, we have the square root of negative 121 with a 5 on the outside. The 5 is being multiplied. That's the, that's the key. So we're going to take the negative 1 out, so 5i on the outside. And then we're going to evaluate the square root of 121, 21. And we all know that that's 11, right? So 5i times 11 is going to be 55i. Boom. So then I have negative square root of negative 96. We're going to take the i out. Anytime I have a negative under a radical, I take the i out. And we break apart 96. 8 times 12, 2 times 4 times 4 times 3, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3, doubles go outside, singles stay inside, right? So I take two twos outside, and that i is outside. On the inside, the singles stay inside, so I have a 2 and a 3 on the inside, right? So 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 3 on the inside is 6. Make sure you don't forget that i in your answer. So now let's take that skill and let's bring it with us to solve equations, all right? Almost done, people. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and take the square root of both sides because that's how you get rid of an exponent, right? So I'm going to get x equals plus or minus 12i because if the square root of 144 is 12, but a negative gives me an i. That's my answer. Remember your plus or minus because you can't forget that when you're solving equations. We want both answers to be reflected. So plus 12i and minus 12i. So now let's try the next equation, which is x squared equals 36, right? And I'm going to get x equals plus or minus 6. Not plus or minus 6i. Because was there a negative under that radical? No, there wasn't. Don't be a robot. Think about what you are doing. No robots here. Robots don't change the world. OK, so 5x squared plus 90 equals 0. I have this equation. I need to isolate x. So of course, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 90 from both sides. I'm going to get 5x squared equals. <laughs> thank you. I said thank you like somebody said bless me. Nobody said bless me. <laughs> um, 
So then I'm, we're going to divide. So we're going to divide by 5, divide by 5. I'm going to get x squared equals negative 18. We're going to take the square root of both sides. So now I'm, I need to simplify the square root of negative 18, right? So first of all, there's going to be an i on the outside because there's a negative. But we got 6 times 3, and then we have 2 times 3 because we got to break down that 6, right? Um, doubles go outside, singles stay inside, 3i square root of 2. So when I write my answer, x equals plus or minus 3i square root of 2. That's what I'm going to get. Not too shabby, right? Okay, so now what we're going to do last but not least is we're going to do 9x squared plus 25 equals 0. We're going to subtract 9 from both, uh, 25 from both sides, excuse me. 9x squared equals negative 25. We're going to divide. And now we're going to square root. So we're going to take the square root of one side and the square root of the other side. We have to simplify. So what we know is the square root of 25 equals 5 and the square root of 9 equals 3. And we know that negative numbers have an i. So x equals plus or minus 5 over 3 i. Yes, that looks funny, but that's how we're going to do it. <laughs> okay, that is the end of our brief lesson on i's, imaginary numbers, complex roots, simplifying them, all of that jazz. I hope that this was good and that you learned something and that you took some notes. But like I always say, go back through the video, see if you can do it without my help, okay? And then I will catch you in the next one. But make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, tell everybody who you know, all your friends, all your best friends, friends, all the people you're beefing with or not beefing with, your mama's auntie, sister's brother, about this chair. Okay, bye.